Welcome to Magpie House. Welcome to 2013. We are right at the entrance of a new world, new way of existence, new way of being. And this is what we gathered here to talk about. At the old times, we used to gather around their house fire and we would share our stories and we would share our wisdom. And that's how um, the stories went from generation to generation. It's been a long time since we stopped, you know, sitting around the house fire. We sit around our television, but we don't really sit in that. Um, sharing unity kind of gathering as it used to be. So, I'll tell you a little about myself. My name is Ilo Batsheva. I am, come from Jerusalem. I travel around the world and I teach people about the new era. I will share with you how did I come to do this work. I see myself and, and am guided to be in service of humanity and the divine. My quest is for peace, for love, for unity. This is a time that all of us sisters and brothers around the world are to come and share our unity and love. I'm a healer, and uh, within my healer, my healing, I work on the vibratory state of the person. When everything is energy, the universe is a huge energy. Now, each one of us has a frequency. Each one of us has a unique frequency. And once we vibrate in this unique frequency, the universe recognizes us and it flows through us and it uplifts us. It helps us come to the opportunities we need in life, to meet our soulmates, to meet the opportunities so we can realize our soul's purpose. But what has been happening for thousands and thousands of years is that we actually have been going away, away, away from the source. It's been years that we were thinking with our mind and not feeling with our heart. All was about science and logic. Now today, it has been proven, proven that even what science is basing scientific research upon is basing some of the scientific research on false assumption. So, by being in our mind and blocking our heart, and why did we block our heart? We block our heart because there's alienation, we get hurt. We want to uh, protect ourselves, so for our protection, we build layers and layers and layers of separation. Now, as we come to this world as babies and we are trying to understand who we are, we get the first understanding of who we are through our parents, mainly through our mother, but through our father, and then through our close environment and so on. We constantly try to understand who we are because our parents forgot who they are. Humanity has forgotten who we are. We are sacred. We all carry the spark of God within us. We all are sacred and we have been living a life that does not recognize our sacredness. So my in my work to heal people, most people that become sick on a physical level, a mental level, emotional level, are sick because they have lost themselves. 
like going so far away from themselves that they don't know who they are anymore and they feel lack of connection to themselves. There's an agony because the soul yearns so much to realize itself in matter in this world. So it's been for generation after generation that we have been forgetting who we are. So when we come, our parents do not remind us. We get, you know, their weaknesses, their strengths as, as an example. We try to figure out who we are by that. They are the mirror we get to who we are. But it's not who we are. It's not who we are. So we have, as most people have established some idea in their mind about who they are, by what they were expected by their parents, by what they figured out that they should be or shouldn't be, but we lost connection to the depth of who we are. And that's why the separation has been growing and growing and growing, and the alienation has been growing. Now, when we block our chakras, when we put layers and layers of protections upon ourselves, we don't really protect ourselves, because as long as we are alive, we are vulnerable. This is the, the meaning of life, to be vulnerable. But because we are afraid, we lost faith. We lost trust. We are afraid to expose who we are. And when we build those layers of protection, we actually close our chakras. And when we close our chakras, we don't get energized by the universe. Because how the universe flows to us, you will see so soon in pictures, but I'll explain. The same like breathing, when we breathe, the air comes through our mouth, the oxygen goes to our lungs and spreads in our body and sustains us. The energy comes to us through our celestial body. The Kabbalah has been talking about this for thousands of years, and the way energy comes is through our astral body, our ethereal body, our mental body, and then through our crown chakra, it starts a, a dropping and flowing through our main chakras, and the rent spreading out to 144,000 chakras in our body. But as we put the layers of protection, we actually close our chakras, we block our chakras. So we don't get energy now. Energy is everything. Energy is, you know, physical energy. Energy is love. Energy is money. Everything is energy. So when we live with that system that is meant to help us flow in synchronicity with ourselves and in synchronicity, with the universe and how it is meant to assist us to be all that we are, this system is not working, it's blocked. That's why we can't, most people can't express emotions. They feel but they are like stuck inside. They can't express emotion because the chakras are closed. <coughs> so in my work as a healer, I help people open their chakras. I help people express traumas that have been blocking their energetic system. And I also give them, I channel um, prayers and mantras and practices on, on a personal level for every person. I get another channel. And these mantras are frequency-coded frequency mantra. It's not just the words. There's frequency within these mantras that actually release, release the, the stuckness, the blockage that we have built within ourselves. 
So not only that I heal you know, physically, I give people tools to continue and heal themselves for life. My belief is, you know, give people a road to fish for themselves for life and not to create a dependency that they constantly need to go to someone to help them. This is a tool that are helping people manifest their deepest dream and create magical happenings in their lives. So, <clears throat> energy, energetic, energy healing is working on the level of the conscious and the subconscious. And with this prayer, what happens is the person releases the blockage. See, if a person was not lucky enough to have love when they're a baby, how will they attract love to their life? They don't know how it is, how it feels. Once they don't know how it feels, they don't know to attract it. Or how will a baby attract, how will a person who when it was a baby experience scarcity will attract abundance? if he doesn't know how it feels. So my work is to actually give people the tools to go beyond those blockages they experience and set themselves free from energetic blockage. Also, uh, I have created a system called Frequencies of Lights, which is a healing system and also it allows me to guide people to tell them everything they need to know about their life, their weaknesses, their strengths, their life purpose, what they are about, what are the gifts that they brought to the world, how they can really live to be the utmost connected to their true essence. So I travel, I just um, I travel in the States, I travel in Europe, I travel in Australia, and I work in Israel, I have a very uh, busy practice in Israel. And uh, I find that there are certain people who come to my lectures. There are certain people. Some people came here for this time, some people are get ready to awaken. So when they see, you know, an ad about the company information that this talk is going to happen, they will subconsciously understand that they had to come and listen. So you are not by coincidence here. You are here because you were summoned here, because you have a role in this talk. How did my journey begin? I was a very successful businesswoman when I was 23 years old uh, in the optical business. I had shops and continued to develop. And I was, right from the beginning, I was very abundant, thank God. But I felt that that was not my goal. In my business as well, I always, always put as a first important thing the people to give them the best eyesight solution and not, you know, not by the price. I never look at people as businesses do as a wallet. For me, people were people and I was caring about every person. And that's how I succeeded, because people felt the integrity. I mean, if they would come and an optometrist would see that they don't have to wear glasses, they, have, they can have some little correction, but they can manage without, we'll tell them that. And there are not <laughs> many businesses, I'm sorry to say, that we you know, have a customer step out without uh, paying money, but the integrity, the love of people was the first important thing. 
And so um, it was time that I was to decide. I had the opportunity to become a chain in Israel, to go into the malls. And I decided that this is not what I'm about. I'm, I don't want to sell things anymore. What I want is actually to serve. I was praying to go all the time to serve. And then, <clears throat> on the year of 2000, I went to the Dead Sea with a friend who is specializing in rebirthing. And I was floating on the water of the Dead Sea. And that friend was just holding me with two, two fingers and taking me through the process. And then I went back to the time of birth. And what happened was an amazing experience. I had a vision that light beings were, were coming to me and they were explaining me, to me that they have raised me. This experience actually solved the real that I had all my life because my mother and my father were very sick when I was born. And I never knew, I mean, by testimonials, they could not take care of me. I never knew when I grew up. It was real. And what happened in this vision was that I, show, I was shown that I wasn't raised by people, but I was raised by my being. And right after this vision, I saw a luminous lady. Her feet were on the ground and her head was in the sky and she was shining with the shimmering light of the moon and she was emitting love, softness and such a beautiful smile and kindness that when her energy went through my body, through every cell of my body like a breeze of love, she bent down, she put me on her feet, on her hand, I was like this tiny dot of light, because she was huge. And she smiled at me, when she smiled at me, I was like washed by a waterfall of love. And I felt that my DNA was changing. I felt a profound change going within me. And she took me, she put me up to the sky, and I knew that she was initiating me, she was connecting me to very high vibrations. And then again she smiled at me and I was just embraced by the highest, the most beautiful love one can ever imagine. And she put me down. She's the divine feminine, we call her in, in the, by the language of the Kabbalah, Shkina. She's the divine feminine. And she is now calling her children, calling the children of humanity to come back to love. For years, thousands of years, we, will, we were separating to nations and religions and going out to war and doing terrible things one to another. And this is the time to understand that it's not what we are about. What makes people go to war is the ego. The ego is very weak. It wants constantly to feel strong, to feel appreciated. So the ego is actually, uh, has actually been driving people Whoever doesn't approve of me, if I'm not appreciated, I will fight this person or fight this nation. That is the ego. We were born, we are born to a world of conflict. From the very moment of our birth, we, we face conflict, either with our, between our parents. The conflict actually starts in our brain because we have two separate hemisphere and each hemisphere is attracting us to a different direction. So uh, we have gone through separation far away from ourselves and the divine feminine has been since that initiation channeling to me all the time what I need to do. And 
that is when I, mean, I was I was already studying for many years healing and and all kinds of modalities that um, to help people. But when she came to me, there was a profound change that happened to me, and there was knowledge that was is constantly is constantly channeled about this time about the home luminous which I talked about in my last lecture here and we will see your recent lecture um, what is coming to uh, to unfold at this time So there are many modalities that I, I use for healing and, uh, and these modalities create magical healing in people's lives and mainly it is actually the energy that I carry within me and this energy is a very high love. It's something, love is, is what I feel constantly, and I know love is the healing of this world. Because love is the only thing that makes us grow, that makes us connect to positive. All the rest, fear, anger, judgment, all those, those emotions are putting us down. When we let go of these emotions, that are very heavy on us, they're very heavy. When we let go of them, then we become light and we ascend. Our frequencies can stand. While we're holding that baggage of our life, the pain, the story, this wears us down. It's very heavy and it does not allow us to ascend. <clears throat> so, my journey is about healing humanity, my journey is about spreading love, and my journey is about preparing people for what is going on now. As we are speaking, at this time, what is happening is that there's two spirals of energy, one of the old energy and one of the new energy. That is what we are um, meant to make the quantum leap of. The old energy, we can see it's our old patterns, it's our old, old stagnations, it's our old habits. But if we have the right consciousness, if we constantly raise our consciousness to love, if we have, in every choice we make, if we think, what is love here and what is another emotion? What is alienation? Alienation, what is fear? If I want to become a healer and I have a safe paycheck in the bank and if my heart says I want to become a healer and I might have said but this is giving me safety. But whatever actually, whatever comes out of fear, safety, is coming out of fear. If we are not afraid to, learn, to lack anything, we don't need that safety. It's actually uh, illusional, this safety. The true safety is being in flow, is being in harmony, and is being in synchronicity with the energy of the universe. This is the great power, the great abundance and so on. So, uh, to the new era, what do we need? What do we need in order to connect to the new era? It's all on the vibratory level. All this change is on the vibratory level. Because when we vibrate love and light, and we are not heavy with anger, with suspicion, 
with judgment, with all those emotions, once we are vibrating a flow of love, we actually connect to the new era. It's through vibration and through consciousness. The way we connect to the new era is through corridors of consciousness. Now people who develop the right consciousness can ascend to the new era. So most people feel disconnected to themselves. Most people, the story of humanity is actually a fall out of grace. We fell out of grace. We became uh, so far away, so alienated from our own divinity, from the connection with the source. At the beginning, there was a huge connection with the source. People knew everything just from within. People understood everything from within. And we were together. We were in love and unity. Now you see, no one creates the shift but us. So we cannot wait and think someone will come and do it for us. It is each one of us, if we want to change this world, this world that is about power, money, egoism, this world that some people have so much money, other people are hungry, don't have food to eat. If we want to change this world, each one of us is the one that raises our consciousness. Because it's sick. Our consciousness our own uh, light working, the fact that we carry light within, creates a shift. So when the soul, when we come, and when the soul comes into a body, comes to this uh, uh, level of dimension, we come through a vortex. So imagine, that above our head there is a vortex and there is such. There is a vortex and above this vortex are our celestial bodies. Now when we are aligned with this vortex, we are channeling and the energy flows in and out and we get to be actually a be one with the universe, feel that oneness, and have that wonderful energy. But once we stop being our true self, once we manipulate ourselves, because that's what our parents expected of us, because we didn't think we are good enough to be accepted for who we are, and for so many reasons. Once we try to be an idea and not really flow with the truth of who we are, and most people are in that state, once we do that, that vortex is not giving us the energy. It's not above us. We are not connected to the vortex. The vortex is actually the, the channel of nourishment that we get by birthright and we close it by being this, this harmonious. Now, I'm a psychic and I'm a guide and people tell me, well, tell me what will happen in the next year. And I constantly understand, explain to people. It depends on the level of your consciousness. Because at every moment of our life, we, cre we go through the infinite parallel realities. Every moment of our life we're choosing. And we are influencing our lives. And we are creating our lives. So, that consciousness that you are the one who creates your life and you take responsibility on that and you understand that what connects us all, what is divine, what is the divine vibration. As the Kabbalah says, if you are in a divine vibration, 
you are with the divine. If you are about kindness, if you are about love, if you are about understanding, then you are in the vibration of the divine. Then you get the light of the divine and you get the flow of abundance. So remember, every moment we create our life. So as I said in the beginning, we, were, we came here to study, to study ourselves, to study about coming to this world actually is coming, like coming to the, the university, the same idea. When we go to the university, we want to get a certain academic degree, we go through exams and, you know, hard working and anxiety and all that. But once we pass the exam, we are up to the next level. The reason our souls come again and again to the body is because they come to learn, to get to the next level, to raise the vibration. So the soul summoned to our life's challenges and many times we would ask, why is this happening to me? Everything that happens to you is an opportunity, but we tend to see it as a problem. A challenge is an opportunity to raise a vibration. That's what it means. You know, we want to check who the person is. You don't check them when everything is great in their life. But when they go into problems that they don't have money, you see who they are. Or when they go into a situation that they are arguing about money, you see who they are. So those challenges actually bring out the truth of the person. So. This is studying the existence. It's all about studying. We are all huge consciousness and huge intelligence and we come here to study and raise our vibration. This is the meaning of life. That's why we come here again and again and again. So, it's time of awakening. We have been forgetting the sacred of who we are. We have been going into a nation, everyone closing up in their isolation. People just don't believe each other anymore. They don't trust each other. It became a very sad world. There are so many people in depression. And so many people become sick because they're sad. Because they don't understand how to live in this world. It's time to come back home. This is what is the new consciousness and the new era is about. It's time to recognize, remember, open those new ones and come back to the memory of us be being one in beautiful unity with the divine. It's time to open our hearts and shine our heart like the sun and unite in love together. We all have a story and I can, the workshop tomorrow is meant to bring out a personal story and take them to culmination and until the person sees and realizes and feels they connect with the real energy that they are. So life is not about finding yourself, but aligning with your true nature. If you are not aligned, you are not in contact. You feel life like watching. <coughs> People are closed in their minds now our minds are like libraries of experiences. For example, we meet someone we love 
and you want to open up and connect and then again you go into our mind and say remember when you allow that person to come to your heart and you got hurt so you know stop don't don't allow people coming so close to you and that's how our mind programs us constantly and constantly and constantly to stay in the same locked script, locked vibration. The only way we can break out of this is come from the heart and understand that it's very simple. <coughs> there is only one truth and that is love. So you don't stop vacillating. But between you and go, I'll say that, and I'll do that, and I'll go that, and I won't show, and I would show, and all this mind blubber. No fight, no conflict, just one consciousness. There is only one truth, and that is love. That is. Once you understand it and integrate it, you will come to know peace and harmony within. And your life will unfold. Now, it was true, Albert Einstein said, great spirit, always encounter divine. It's true, the more we shine in our light, the more challenges we get to go through because the test is fierce. I went through in my life many challenges since I was a little child. <clears throat> I've written a book which will come out uh, in about two or three months and this book is called Redeem Your Sacred Self, The Key to the New Era. There is absolutely a direct connection between redeeming the sexy that we are and between the fact that we can raise to the vibration of the new era. If you don't redeem that sacred self, you don't have the vibration that will take you to the new era. So in this book, I'm calling, uh, I'm talking about light and darkness, good and bad, that actually they are all divine teaching system because how will we know who we are if we are not tested by light and darkness, good and bad? This is the choice that we make that determines who we are, how we behave. Now, if someone, if we want to change this world, let's say someone comes and attacks me, and confronts me, and he says something very hurtful to me. If I, I, I will answer him, yeah, sure, why are you saying this about me? And you are this and this and that. Will I be making a difference? Will I be changing the world? No. We need to just be naturally in the essence of love. And if this person comes and challenges us, we will know they are suffering because people are hurting others when they are suffering, when they are afraid, when they carry wounds. That's the reason. So the only way we can heal is by being there with compassion. And instead of charging back at the person saying, come on, mate. Let's be brothers. Let's talk love. And then you've made a difference in this world. <clears throat> How did we split? How did we split from India? How did we become so split? Split from our heart. Our hearts split from ourselves, from our emotions, because we have given up the harmonious love in totality and infinity. 
we let in fear of love. We're afraid to love. I, want, I don't want to get hurt. Like love is this terrible thing. I don't want to get hurt. I don't want to love. We replace the ego, the ego where there was unity before. Once we were one beautiful unity of love with God. And when we separated into that darkness came distrust, anger, alienation, judgment, pessimism, and all the negative energy. So that negative, negative energy is already there almost within every person. This is the struggle, the true struggle we need to do in order to ascend is let go of negativity. And it's a struggle because negativity takes hold on you. <clears throat> when I give practice to people, I tell them, I know there would be, that your voice within would say, why should I work hard on this? Why should I do it? Why should I make the effort? Then negativity tries to get hold on us. And if the negativity has a hold of us, we don't get to experience that beautiful consciousness of love and unity that is available for us, that is the highest, most uh, illuminating experience one can have. So nothing that I do is actually a medical procedure. It's all spiritual work. And, but sometimes it brings for people emotions. It brings for people to actually face things in themselves. And that's why there's, I always make sure to let people know that they take responsibility for themselves. This is the word love in Hebrew, you see, the Hebrew that was written in the Bible. <clears throat> this is the code, Ahava. Can you repeat with me? Ahava. Ahava is the code for humanity and the universe. And that code, Ahava, was set in the biblical time by the high priest in the Holy of Holies. This was raising the vibration to the utmost connection with the divine. So the consciousness that all of us, regardless race, gender, uh, nation, color, whatever, we are all here for a reason. We are all actually serving in that unity and that <clears throat> the high level of consciousness shows that this consciousness, that we are all, is the task maker and coordinator coordinator of each spark. The Kabbalah calls our soul a spark. <clears throat> All of us are important here. 